Okay, this is continuation from section 2.5, um, the section with substitution, okay? So we first want to try to separate this problem, and then if we can, we just do it using the method of separation. If we can't, then we can use the substitution. So at first I noticed that here I could factor out a y. And I could attempt to separate the variables by dividing each term by x squared and y. And so then the y's would reduce and I'd end up with y plus x dx and I'd end up with 1 over y dy. And this would still be 0. However, you still have this variable y that's causing a problem. So therefore I'm going to substitute for y. So I'm going to say let y equal ux. Maybe I can get everything's in terms of u's and x's. However, if y is ux, then if I take the derivative of both sides, I get the derivative, and then taking the derivative with respect to no particular um, variable. What that means is when I take the derivative of each variable, I will get dy or du or dx, depending on which variable I'm differentiating. So when I take the derivative of y, I get dy. But here you have two um, independent variables. So I have to use a product rule to take this derivative. So I get the first variable times the derivative of the second, which would be dx, plus the second variable, which is x, times the derivative of the first variable, which is du. And so then I end up getting this expression to substitute for dy. Now if I do that, I go to my equation here, I'm going to say that the y is going to become ux and this y over here is also going to become ux but dy is going to become this expression u dx plus x du and then now I want to attempt to separate it again but this time I want to separate it with u's and du's and x's and dx's. So I have to simplify and distribute here a little bit. So if I simplify this by putting each expression over x and distributing the dx at the same time, I will end up with ux over x, which is u and a dx. Here I will end up with x over x, which is 1 and a dx. And you could write the one or choose not to, it's up to you. Over here, I have to distribute this fraction. So when I do that, I will end up with u over ux, which reduces to 1 over x dx. And here I will have x over ux, which reduces to 1 over u du. And so then I want to group my x's, my dx's together and my du's together and it looks like they kind of already are grouped okay so what I want to do here is I want to factor out the the um, dx here I may also want to get common denominators but I'll do that in a second step Oh, I may have made a mistake. I believe I did. Notice that here in orange, I was dividing by x squared y, and the y's canceled, but I sh still should have had an x squared here. And then here, the x squared's canceled, then I am still left with 1 over y, which means that this denominator here should still be an x squared. 
Um, and everything else was just substituted, so it didn't affect any of that. But it will affect these terms here. So when you're dividing by x squared, one of the x's will cancel, but you'll still have one in the denominator. And here, again, one of the x's will cancel, but you'll still be left with one in the denominator. So actually, when I group these together and factor out the dx, these are all fractions already with a common denominator. And if these are actually like terms, so I could combine those. I get u plus 2, and since they would both be over x, I can just write it like over x. I can also write this as u plus 2 times 1 over x dx. And the reason I would want to do that is it helps in separating the variables because you don't want u's with the dx's. You want the u's with the du's. So what that means is I would have to divide this term, this term, and this term by u plus 2. Now here they would cancel and I'd have 1 over x dx plus, and here this would also be in the denominator with the u. And then 0 divided by anything is 0. And now I have successfully separated my variables. So now I would be able to begin the differentiation. However, a lot of times in these problems, you do have to do um, integration, not integration by parts. Um, you have to do partial fraction decomposition. So this fraction, I can integrate rather easily. This fraction, though, will require the partial fraction decomposition. So I'm going to do that here in orange. So if I have 1 over u, u plus 2, Partial fraction decomposition will tell me I can rewrite that as some constant over u plus some different, possibly different constant over u plus 2. And if I multiply each one of these factors by the LCD u, u plus 2, the fractions will reduce into 1 equal to a times u plus 2 plus b times u. Or in other words, 1 equal to au plus 2a plus bu. And depending on how you solve system, I mean a uh, partial fraction decomp, uh, will take you to a pl different place on this particular problem. Um, some people let u equal two different numbers, and then they have two different equations, and it allows them to solve that system. I like to use the method of equating coefficients of u, of my variable u, and then constants. So on this left-hand side, I have no, co no coefficient of u, no u's whatsoever. So the coefficient would be 0. However, over here, I have a coefficient of a, and I have a coefficient of b. So when I combine these like terms, I should get no u's left um, according to the equivalency here. Now for my constants, terms without u, on this side I have 1, and on this side I have 2a, which means regardless of what a is, that single constant should be equivalent to this constant over here, 1. What that means is that a equals 1 half. And if I substitute that back into the top equation, that would mean that b would have to equal negative 1 half. So I'm going to go back to the rest of the, the, rest of the problem and use this um, partial fraction decomposition. So here was my original. And I'm going to use this partial decomposition with the 1 half here and the negative one half there. So I would have one half over u plus negative one half over u plus two.
And then I will integrate all three parts. So the integral of 1 over x dx plus the integral of 1 half times 1 over u minus 1 half times 1 over u plus 2 du equal to the integral of 0. And it really wouldn't matter with respect to any variable because the integral of 0 is just a constant because the derivative of a constant is 0 with respect to any variable. It's still the case. Now here I get the ln of x. Here I get 1 half ln of u. Here I get minus 1 half the ln of u plus 2. Okay, now we have to back sub. So we have to put back in what u was. Remember, y equaled ux, which means that u would equal y over x. So I'm gonna go back in and make that substitution. And just to avoid the fractions, I'm gonna go ahead and multiply every term by two. And here I will get two ln of x, the twos will cancel here, leaving me with ln of y over x, the twos will cancel here, leaving me with ln of y over x plus two, and two times a constant is still a constant. Now I'm gonna use my log properties. First, let me get a common denominator there. So this should be two x over x, which will simplify into this if I combine it into one fraction. So now I can use my log properties and I will get the ln of y minus the ln of x minus the ln of y plus 2x minus the ln of x equal to c. Now this minus is applied to everything here. So since I split it into two terms, then that minus will apply to both of those terms. So we've got a negative ln of x and an ln of x, which will cancel or reduce. Um, and I still have these together. And so there's a couple of things we can do here to try to solve for y. Um, one of those things would be to do the e. So combine this all into one log and do e, the exponential raised to both sides. So if I do that, first I need to bring this up as an exponent. And then I need to put these terms together. So we would have ln of x squared y all over y plus 2x equal to c. Then I would do the exponential raised to this exponent and the exponential raised to the c. So that would cancel the ln and I'd end up with x squared y over y plus 2x. And e to the power c is still a constant. Then I would multiply both sides 
by the common denominator y plus 2x, they would cancel here and I'd have x squared y equal to cy plus 2x. Now I can solve this for y. So if I come here, because I'm running out of paper here, I can minus the cy to the left hand side and then actually this should have a c as well right because the c distributed then I can factor out the y on the left hand side and then I can divide both sides by that factor and I will have y equals 2cx over x squared minus c or again two times a constant is still a constant it just would be different constant than this one down here so if you keep everything in terms of one single constant I would leave it in that form because whatever this constant is up here is going to be double that it's better than having c1 and c2 right so we'll just leave our answer in this form okay Let's go ahead and look at example three now. So again, we would attempt to separate it and see what we can do from there, but this one is an initial value problem. So once we do the, we do um, solve the DE, we have to go back in and actually figure out what that C is. So here I'm going to multiply both sides by DY in an attempt to separate. then here it really wouldn't make a difference because if I divide I guess you would need to divide by x in attempt to get this term to be just y's and dy's but if you did that you would still have the problem over here because you would have an x downstairs but you'd still have this y squared dx so it's still cause an issue. So the x is actually the issue, not the y. Actually, no, I'm lying. The y is the issue. The y is not an issue here, but there's an unneeded y on this term. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to say let y equal ux. And if I do that, I will get um, dy first times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So then I'm going to substitute x squared plus 2 times ux squared dx equal to x times ux times u dx plus x du. And let's simplify this. Now remember this is all together in parentheses. So we have x squared plus 2u squared x squared dx. And here we have u x squared times all of this. And then we can go ahead and distribute here. So distribute the dx here, distribute the u d x squared over there. And then we would attempt to get all the dx's together and all the du's. du is already over here, so we're going to subtract this term over to get all the dx's together. And if you notice, these two are like terms. So I do just get x squared dx plus u squared x squared dx, 2 minus one is just positive one. Then these two both have an x squared and a dx in common. And if I factor that out, I will end up with one plus u squared. So 
So in order for me to separate it, I would have to divide this side by x cubed, which means I would also have to divide this side by x cubed. And then on this side, I would need to divide by the factor 1 plus u squared. So of course, I have to um, divide the other side by 1 plus u squared. So the parentheses should go here. It should be u squared like that. There we go. So then here these terms would cancel, here these terms would cancel, these would reduce, but I'd still have an x in the denominator. So I'd end up with 1 over x dx. And over here I'd end up with u over 1 plus u squared du. Now, this is actually... Um, I think a u, um, yeah, we can do u substitution. So I'm going to integrate both sides. And I almost have the denominator's derivative upstairs. However, the derivative of 1 plus u squared is 2u. And in order for me to put the 2 in there, I have to also take it out to make sure that this fraction is still equivalent to the original fraction. Okay? So it's kind of like u substitution, but without having to write all the u substitution. So the fact that I have some function and its derivative up here, my um, integration rules tell me that that's going to come out to ln of my denominator. And this is going to be ln of x. You put the plus c on whichever side you wish to. If you put them on both, when you minus it over, it's going to end up being on one side anyway. Um, but for now, we'll just leave it there. Now we have to back up. So remember what u was. y equaled ux, which means u equals y over x. So let's go ahead and I'm going to multiply everything by 2 just to make the fraction go away. So this term times 2, this term times 2, and this term times 2. Here they cancel. Here I end up with 2 ln of x equal to ln of 1 plus, this would be y squared over x squared. And then 2 times c is still a constant. Now I'm going to get a common denominator here. And I'm going to bring the two up using my log properties. And then I'm going to expand this using my log properties. And then I'm going to move this one over to the right hand side. So I did ln of the top minus ln of the bottom. And now I'm going to add ln of x squared to both sides. So that it goes away. And I end up with two of them over here on this side. Then again, the 2 would come up here. So we'd get ln of x squared squared. Which is just ln of x to the fourth. And because of that, you don't really need the bars anymore. Because x to the fourth is always going to be positive. And in, actual, in actuality, you wouldn't need the bars here either because x squared would always be positive, and then you're adding another positive, y squared, so it would always be positive. Now I need to solve for y, or attempt to. So we're going to do e raised to this side and e raised to that side. So on this side, you end up with just x to the fourth, 
And on the right hand side, you're gonna end up with e to the ln of x squared plus y squared times e to the c using your exponent rules, right? If you're adding exponents because you are multiplying terms with the same base. Then this one would cancel and you get x squared plus y squared times e to the c, which is still a c. And again, you could distribute and then you could um, subtract cx squared from both sides. You could divide by c on both sides. And then you could take the square root on both sides, getting the square root of x squared minus cx squared over c. Actually, if you look at the book, they don't do this because then you would get two answers. And this is too complicated to write in the textbook, so they usually leave it at this form right here. x to the fourth minus cx squared equal to cy squared. And they leave it looking like that, okay? But this was an initial condition problem. And the initial condition was y of negative one equals one. So we do need to figure out what that c value is. So this is the x, this is the y. So I'm gonna plug in negative one for x, and I'm gonna plug in one for y. We end up with one minus c times one equal to c times one, or one minus c equals c, or one equals two c, or c equals one half. So then what we end up with, if we plug that c back into this equation, we end up with x to the fourth minus one half x squared equal to one half y squared. Now again, the book doesn't have fractions in it, so what they do is they multiply each term by two, and you end up with the equation two x to the fourth minus x squared equals y squared. And this is what you have as your final answer. Now here are the homework problems in case you didn't get them during class. So for this section we want to do 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8. These are all substitution problems. They are lengthy. Most of them do require partial fraction decomposition. You'd be very lucky if, you, if one of these or some of these don't require partial fraction decomposition. Number 11, I believe, is the um, initial value problem. So once you solve it and you get the solution, you have to make sure you go back in and use your um, information on your initial condition to figure out what that C is and give the solution with the C's plugged in. Okay. And if you stop here, that's fine. Just understand that when you look in the back of the book, it's going to be in this form. And as long as you understand that yours is equivalent to that one, then you know you've got it correct. Okay. Um, sometimes you may have to manipulate yours a little bit to make it look like what's in the back of the book if you're really trying to find out if it's correct or not. Um, if what you have is completely different from what's in the back of the book, then you may have an error somewhere. And those are the instances where you want to ask me questions about that in class or through email um, or during my office hours, just so that you can clarify where your mistake is and then you can continue on with the rest of the problem. But that is it for the rest of this video. Um, make sure you look for the review for the test. Okay.